Hello. Can everyone hear me okay? Can you see me okay? It's a bit uh, noisy here, uh, but I hope it sounds okay. There's uh, only a few people here because I didn't get to send out a reminder email. Um, I usually send a reminder email like 30 minutes before I come on here. Um, so let me know where you're from. Who am I? Who's who's watching? Let me know. Um, are you have you, do you got have you guys uh, played oud before? Are you guys beginners? How long have you been playing oud for? I'm sure there's some uh, usual faces here coming up. Let me fix something with my camera and then I will be right with you. Um, I did, wasn't going to do this YouTube live, I don't think, uh, actually, because uh, I'm just recovering from COVID. And uh, luckily today I don't have a fever, so I kind of feel up to it. But uh, this whole week I've uh, had to reschedule lessons and um, yeah, it's been quite a gong show over here. Okay, let's see here. Take this autofocus off. Okay, that's what I wanted to do. So yeah, um, I have been a bit out of commission for for most of the week, and uh, so yeah, my um, uh, my oud mojo is not really where it usually is. <laughs> So did something funny to my hand. I'm not really sure what I did, but um, it's a bit painful. So I have to figure, uh, give give it some rest, give it some exercise. So yeah, um, this uh, YouTube live uh, is gonna be just beginner stuff. I just want to. Um, uh, help you guys get started with the oud and uh, we're gonna talk about the right hand the left hand and uh, keep it nice and simple uh, looks like we have a little bit of lag happening I'm not sure what's going I'm not sure if that's it looks okay I mean from what I can see here if there's any lag let me know if not that's okay all right, the, this week I'm also doing a special enrollment of the foundation program. So if you haven't started uh, learning Oud yet, or if you're a, you're a beginner, the Oud foundation program, uh, I've just mi migrated it to a new platform. I wanna show you what that looks like. And um, it looks really cool. I'm really happy about it. So uh, I'm slowly moving all my courses to a new platform. Let's see what I got here. Um, This thing always uh, messes around with stuff. Let's see, it's YouTube Studio. No, that's not the right window. Okay. No capture. For some reason it's not showing me the window I want to show. Alright, that's annoying. Okay, great. Oh well, I won't be able to show that if it doesn't uh, want to play nice. Okay, so let me know where you're from, uh, how long you've been playing the Oud. Let's see. Excellent, I'm glad it's all smooth. Yeah, it could be more inf inflammation. That's that's true. Thanks, thanks for joining, Carol. Good to see you here. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, so let me know. It, t today would be a good day if you just want to like uh, ask any questions that uh, you really have been you've been wondering about. Um, there's always you know times when we have these kind of thing questions we might think are stupid or um, maybe deeper questions you want to talk about with Oud music, Arabic music, Turkish music, Persian music, whatever you feel like. 
I'd be happy to um, to see if I can answer any questions or give you some insight or some sort of direction to find the answers elsewhere. There is a cool there is a cool que question on Facebook Oud forum um, just the just the, the other day, which I've been kind of following. Um, there's a beautiful rosette made by um, the uh, Nahat family. Beautiful oud rosette uh, where it, they've got all the names of all the makamat all in a circle and um, the notes associated with it. I haven't been able to read and, and decipher that thing myself. Um, but uh, it's a very beautiful design and uh, so you know someone was asking like what's the meaning of this why is it all in a row and I have to look at it a bit more myself but um, there back um, Safiya, Safiya al-Din um, Urmavi um, one of the uh, theoreticians of uh, Middle Eastern music um, he was a he was a he was a Persian, um, and uh, he wrote a, 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 lo a book about music, and I think he also uh, designed uh, or organized the makamat in this kind of way, in a circle kind of way. And back in his day, um, they weren't called makams back then. They, they weren't known as makamat. Um, they were called different terms, but anyway. Um, so this, this question is very interesting. I really want to research it a lot more. And um, but uh, this question was cool because uh, you know the the first question is what like what does it say basically, um, and so we real we came to the conclusion okay it's the names of the makams and also the note names, um, all in a circle. And why is it designed this way? Um, well, the makams they line up with certain notes, right? Um, starting notes. Uh, uh, after the 15th century, um, the, the we don't really know who or or what culture, what uh, what civilization, what empire, or uh, who the people were behind deciding and associating with the positions that you place, the note positions, the pit, pitch positions. They started associating it with the mode or the makam. And that's why they started using the term makam, because makam means location. Um, location of the pitch is associated with the beginning of uh, the makam, makamat, or the makam that you're playing, the mode that you're playing. Um, so, for example, makam rast. Makam rast, we know it. The starting note for Makam Rast is the note name is called Rast as well. Rast. Here. And um, of course this has evolved over time. Um, there, right now I'm reading this book um, called uh, Music of the Ottoman Court by Walter Feldman and um, it discusses it's, it discusses the um, the work of uh, Dmitri Kantemir, who was a who was an Ottoman court musician, uh, he was from um, he was a Mold Moldavian uh, prince from Moldova. Uh, he was captured by the Ottoman Empire, and eventually he became part a court musician. And he notated a lot of ancient works on um, on uh, that uh, are still now in our position possession today, thanks to Kantemir's notation. And he also wrote a dissertation on. Uh, of uh, Macombs and all this kind of stuff, uh, explanation on music and all this kind of thing. Anyway, um, it's very interesting to read uh, how he looked at Macombs back then. Um, and uh, even back then, what was happening was there was a distinction between um, a basic Macomb, which are identifiable by the main notes in the basic scale, the basic scale would be the notes of uh, the no the notes uh, for uh, Macomb Rast, and on each uh, note that you so you'd have Macomb Rast here. If you take those same notes and you move one modality up, you get a different Macomb. Uh, you get a different mode. Um, 
And so this would be named after the note that was associated with that pitch location on the uh, the tanbur. The, and so anyway, um, these were the basic maqams. And he, in his book, he, he, he was adamant that these are the only maqams that are associated with certain notes. You have basic maqams and then you have secondary maqams, which are based on accidental notes, uh, notes that are outside of the basic uh, eight, uh, eight notes to the octave that we have in that basic scale. And then anything beyond that is what's a combination. Tarkib is the word. And um, now, now if we come back for fast forward to today, we have um, we call everything maqam, even though it's not based on a location or anything like that, a pitch location. Literally, maqam means uh, location or rank or level. Um, it's directly related to the note, the position of the note, and that's why the term was used. Um, but nowadays, we call everything a maqam. So, um, maqams that are a hybrid of two maqams, like maqam hijaz kar kurd. Um, we have two modal entities, maqam kurd. And we have hijaz kar. Based on the same tonic, tonic, you get maqam, hijaz, kar, kurd. And uh, so we call all of these maqams. And uh, so it's, it's now kind of confusing uh, when we look back into history and we see all these, we see these different um, ways of portraying the whole gamut of maqam, maqamat that we have. And, we, and then when beginners come and see that uh, old style of uh, you calling the notes, we'd have rast, um, we'd have uh, doka, sika, chaharga, nawa, and so forth and so forth, all these different note names. And we realize, oh, those are also maqam names, aren't they? Oh, well, yes, they're literally a maqam, a different maqam. It's a different position on the fingerboard. So, mm, it's very interesting when you learn all these things and some of these things start to get pieced together. Um, it's very interesting and there's still a lot of unanswered questions and a lot of things that we don't really understand or anymore or we've lost, um, things that we've forgotten, things that uh, I'd love to uncover and continue learning more myself. Um, uh, yeah, let's see here. Uh, there's been a little bit of comments here. Uh, let's see here. We got uh, oh, Hassan. You've been uh, you just bought your first oud two weeks ago. That's great. That's awesome. All right, we're gonna do some um, beginner stuff for you. Um, all right, Carol. Two years. That's great. Thank you. And uh, thanks for asking about my new album. Um, yeah, you can listen to my new album anywhere that you can stream um, music these days. Spotify, uh, Deezer, YouTube Music, uh, Apple, uh, iTunes, uh, Apple Music, anywhere. Anywhere that you can get digital music, you can listen to it. It's a very short little album. Um, some tracks that I've been happy with uh, over the years that I decided to release. And um, yeah, so thank you for asking about that. I'll uh, post... Um, Post a perhaps if I can if I can swing it I'll post a link but let's get to some oud uh, basics now. Okay, first things first, holding the risha. Let me get, make sure I can see everything here. Okay, no matter what risha you you use, thick, thin, wide, narrow. Uh, there's a couple ways that you can hold it. Make sure that you are pinching between your thumb and index finger here. And don't leave, don't let it more than a centimeter out of the your thumb and index finger. Your thumb is very curved; should be curved like this. You know, the risha comes at an angle like this. If you just you just uh, hold the risha in front of you and pinch like this, it should be. If you imagine a, a a line here, then you know the the risha is pointing, let's say, at a forty-five degree or or less. Um, in the angle. Then these fingers wrap around like this 
and then we come to hold the hood like this. The most important thing is that your thumb is sloped or straight. It shouldn't be bent like this. Don't play like this. And this uh, and this will cause some some issues, some tone issues, and and some playability issues. Some people do it. It's okay, but um, this is the proper way, like this, like so. I'll bring my thumb back here so it's focused. Your index finger is kind of jutting out because it's got to come underneath the thumb. That's very important. Don't don't play like this. Don't hold the risha like this. Nothing's gonna gonna happen if you hold the risha like this. You're not gonna be able to control uh, very much. So need to have that support underneath. Some people also uh, hold the risha like this. Now, if you want to hold the risha like this, I don't recommend these wide risha. You should use a narrow one, one that's a bit softer, like this, so that it can curl in and uh, doesn't aggravate your pinky so much. But here, these fingers got to go right into the palm. And imagine, get your oud up here on the right leg, get your leg up high and bring your arm around as though you're giving the oud a headlock. Get uh, your, uh, your forearm planted somewhere on the back edge of the oud here, like this, like so. Not too far, not like this, and not too not too close to the wrist, just somewhere comfortably in between the forearm, the elbow socket and the wrist, somewhere like that. Your, your shoulder should come down like this, right? Nice and relaxed. And you should be able to hold the oud with the, your leg, preventing it from slipping, right? That's how, that's how we prevent the oud from slipping. There's some other ways that you can, you can use like uh, some, uh, some stick material or some fabric or something like that. Uh, the material that you can buy at the hardware store to prevent uh, dishes from slipping in your cupboards or from carpets. You can use that. I recommend that for, uh, for people um, who are having trouble with uh, holding the oud. And uh, you can angle out the, the neck so that you, in case, if your arm is having problems coming around the big, large belly, what you have to do, don't play like this. Don't play like this. Push the neck out forward like this. This is correct. This is a great way to play. Push it out like this so that your arm has, has room. There's nothing wrong with this at all. As long as you're not way out there, so your hand is like reaching out forward so much, but um, here is comfortable. Here is good. Um, this is also useful for for uh, you want to play it on your side. That's fine too for women who are large chested. That works. You can get the bowl out of the way. That works too. Left hand comes and gives a handshake to the fingerboard here, like this. There should be a little hole. Uh, between your thumb, you can stick your th finger in between your thumb there. Uh, make sure that your there's always contact between the f the finger, index finger, or the the palm here, this area, and the rest of the fingerboard as we go move down the neck. Your very first basic position is that you want to have one finger per semitone on the f on the fingerboard. <laughs> So, like so, um, and uh, this is very important to keep the contact. We're like a violin. What you want to avoid is doing this. Don't do this. I don't want. Don't want to um, get the gap in between there. This is a more guitar playing kind of style. And uh, this doesn't work for fretless so much. So let's uh, stick. There's a clamping kind of action, very relaxed. Your fingers are, are more on the, on the side. And so you can practice curling the fingers down to the strings, like so. It's a good exercise to try. And we want to get the fingers to spread apart. 
Um, so your first exercise would be to f focus on the right hand. Do some easy downstrokes on each string. One, two, three, four. Using the basic stroke where your hand gets wind winds up and let go. Up, let go. Next string. Now what happens here, if your angle is correct, your risha tip should stick, should get stuck on the string below. As you're doing this, count. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Keep it steady. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So that is your first oud lesson and uh, that's really all you need to do. You need to first just get your right hand associating with where these strings are and get the right hand movement nice and get this swinging action. There's no movement with the elbow. We don't do this. We just wave. Wave with the hand like that. That's great. Imagine fanning yourself on a hot day with your wrist. Use your wrist and forearm. All right. Okay, now let's do a little left hand exercise. So we're gonna, um, we're gonna, let's see here. This one, I always debate about this, what to show first. The, at the beginning, if you're a very beginner, you've never played a string instrument in your, in your life, using the pinky is very difficult. So, but our basic uh, position is the first position where our hand is all the way to the left, and so the basic notes that you find on the, the C string here, Do, Do string, you have Do, Re, Mi. Da, da, da. And so you can either use your middle finger and your pinky finger to reach those. Or you can move your hand into second position and use your index finger and third finger, which is much easier for beginners, I find. Because first and third finger are stronger. Do, re, mi. So what I recommend is just to do one, two, three, rest. One, two, three, rest. And see how my middle finger is just hanging out. It's just waiting. And as I moved with my third finger, my first finger stayed there. That's an important technique. So whichever position you use, follow those rules. And search for that sound. Now go to the next string. You've got G, Sol, La, C, or A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. All right. So now you've learned uh, the notes on the open C string, the G string. Now the D, D string. We've got. You can use your. Let's uh, do second position because I prefer that for beginners. Um, we have the note E or Mi and Fa, F, Re, Mi, Fa, or D, E, F. Okay. Now we got uh, A, B, C or La, Si, Do. Same pattern. First finger, second finger. And you can see between my fingers, you can fit a finger there. That's how wide they need to be apart. Okay. You see how my fingers are kind of stretched like that? You can fit a finger in between. That's what you got to be looking for. If your fingers are close together and tight, you're not going to be able to move. So you just got to isolate each one and slowly go for that movement. Keep your finger down as you move to the next note. So keep the index finger down. La, Si, Do, Re. 
rest la si do rest these two fingers are just waiting they're just waiting to play just ha let them hang out there all right after you do this then you can then do the c major scale or or maqam uh, aja on do do re mi fa sol la si do if you want to do se uh, first position then what happens is your whole finger let's uh, show you what uh, first position looks like we use the second finger and the mid the pinky finger so we have do re mi sol la si re mi fa la si do so you see how our now do is being played with the third finger so we have do re mi fa sol la si do that's first position and so first position and second position is where a lot of most of the oud material most of your playing 90 percent of it is going to be played in first position or second position left right left right left right left right so those are i recommend practicing both ways the second first position is going to be a bit harder to move this pinky you know um but uh nevertheless you gotta learn both ways uh in order to play the oud so focus on one first for a while get that right and then practice the next one whichever position you're more comfortable with um we use different uh, finger positions for different maqamat, uh, depending on what our needs are. All right, uh, so let's see if there's any questions. That's basically all there is from, from me today. Um, I am doing a promo on the Oud Foundation program. Um, I'm slowly migrating my uh, programs to my new platform, and it looks really nice. Uh, I'm really happy about it, uh, but it's taking a lot of time. So. Uh, we've got the Oud Masterclass, uh, Ornaments Masterclass on the new platform. We have Egyptian Music Volume 1 on the new platform. We've got uh, Foundation Program Level 1 to 4 on the new platform. And uh, so slowly the rest of the courses will get there too. And uh, so anyone who signs up this week will get, uh, you'll get put on the new platform. Um, that uh, sale is starting tomorrow, Mon uh, Monday. It's Monday for me, but it's Sunday for everyone else. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll. Uh, I hope you will check that out. Let me put the link in the screen in the on the chat for you. All right, and I'll be happy to answer some questions here. One sec. bought a new Zeryab Oud and it has 12 strings. Should I remove one of the lowest strings? No, you don't need to. I think uh, you have to find out whether you have, what string set you have on there. If you have 12 strings on it, likely it's for Fa Fa tuning. There's two main tunings that Arabs use. We have Do Do, which is what I use. And then we have fa fa. So what fa fa does is it, it starts. The lowest string is the fa string, which goes here where my do string is. And then you have an extra f f high fa string at the top. So if you look at your strings and look at the first bottom three, one two three, are they plain nylon? As opposed to the bottom, the upper three that are wound with some metal. If they're if they're all nylon, then that probably means that you're you've got a fa fa tuning. Uh, so you have to what you got to do is you got to tune your uh, keep the strings on the same way and tune to fa fa. 
which is fa la re sol do fa um, so yeah you don't need to remove the lowest string another question about the right arm which part of right arm lays on the oud for support uh, okay so this is uh, so if you see here my arm is not really laying on the oud the only contact that's made with the oud is my chest here at the back and then my shoulder touches the oud here my shoulder and my bicep a little bit sometimes I bring my my shoulder in to support a little bit but you you don't really have to actually um, that's just a habit I got into um, you can be more relaxed and be more back though really the only thing that you need to touch the oud on your right arm is this area in the forearm that's it other than that it just has to touch the chest um, I found it comfortable to bring my shoulder forward to give a bit of support but that can cause some tension too much tension too um, so uh, just the forearm really your your the rest of your wrist should be hanging above the wood like this yeah hope that answers your question so uh, this is a special enrollment I have for the foundation program. The first five uh, enrollees will get a free coaching session with me on Zoom. So we can tackle any problems you're having holding the oud or getting started or tuning the oud, whatever you need help with. Um, you can also save your uh, Zoom session with me until later time when you want when you've gone through the program and you want to learn. Uh, you want to get some. Make sure you're doing things properly. Get some feedback. Um, so that's a good deal for the first five enrollees. Um, what else we got? Um, yeah, this we also have um, uh, an exclusive uh, little qu question and answer session, much like uh, today, but on Zoom. And it'll be exclusive for people who have enrolled. So you'll be able to join up and, and again, ask questions that you might uh, be needing to ask and get answers to things. I want to make sure that people uh, don't have any roadblocks, you know, uh, uh, to anything stopping them and to be able to talk to somebody and get uh, uh, some real life uh, oud learning advice. Um, so that's why I do this and that's why I have that. So that that's uh, happening this week. If you're on my newsletter, uh, you will get the emails that uh, will tell you about the promotion that I have going on. If you're not on the newsletter, let's see if I can uh, get this link here that you can sign up for it. Ah, it looks like the link is in the description. Here's the link for that. The best Makamas for beginners to learn. Uh, the first two that... Uh, I have a, a, whole, a whole order that I teach people uh, Makamas in. Uh, a particular method. First, I teach Makam Ajam because Makam Ajam is uh, like the major scale in Western music, and it's the 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 one that we hear the most uh, in life, and the, uh, is closest to our ear, and it's also you know nowadays that we use the Western notation system and the, the note names and everything um, in Middle Eastern music. It just makes sense to start there. Uh, so um, Makam Ajam. Uh, is uh, is one the first one I start with, then Makam Nahawand because it's like um, it's like the minor scale um, in Western music, and so it's also very we hear it a lot in in our life in a, in in our environment. Then Makam Kurd, and then Makam Hijaz, and then from there we start to go into the microtonal ones like Makam Rast, which is very close to Makam Ajam. Um, and then we go to Bayati, Sika, and uh, and we just keep going from there. So for the beginner, learn Ajam, Nahawand, and then Kurd and Hijaz, and then you've you've got quite a lot to work with already, right there. Um, Hijaz is, is a bit hard because there's a lot of aspects to Hijaz that need to be explained. Um, uh, anyway, um, yeah, so Ajam, Nahawand and uh, go from there uh, any other questions uh, I'm gonna get going now um, got some work to do got a rest uh, take care of the family every we all got COVID so uh, we're the 
whole week is shot. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I guess that's how it is. Three years during this whole whole pandemic when we avoided COVID until now, which is good. So yeah, any qu any last minute questions? Let me know. I will do my best to answer. You have the link to the foundation program. Um, it will be all on the plat whole new platform tomorrow. And sign up for the newsletter if you're not already on it so that you can hear about when the sale is starting. And uh, yeah, we're going to go and get that all set up now. Oh, thanks, Aaron. That, uh, that means a lot. I'm glad you enjoyed the album. <laughs> um, that's really nice to hear. Uh, all right, uh, Hassan. If you already have a Western music background with some strings experience, is it safe to skip to Foundations too? Um, yeah, uh, that's a good question. Yeah, you, you could uh, you could do that. Yeah, if um, that's uh, partly one of the things that um, I designed it for, uh, you could skip there, um, get Foundation Two. And then after completing foundation two, you could go to foundation three and four. Um, that would probably be the best way to go. I'm just going to open up um, the syllabus for foundation one. So uh, in, foundation par in foundation program one, we've got uh, how to tune your oud, how to read music notation, the basics, and orienta ori orienting yourself to the oud, like holding the, st holding the risha, all that stuff. And then doing single strings, um, so the, the exercises I just showed you, similar stuff to that. Um, alternating strokes, down, up, down, up, this kind of stuff. Um, learning the basic notes on the oud. Um, there's also a basic, uh, there's also a bonus video on how to use a metronome. Um, let's see, the left hand, what do we got here? We've got all the notes on the C string. So yeah, so uh, this foundation one really covers the most basic note positions. And uh, so uh, what I showed you here, but in a more elaborate, a more uh, detailed manner. And um, so we've got the notes on the C string, the G string, uh, D string, A string, all the way until you learn all the, no all the basic notes on the oud. So yeah, you could uh, you could uh, skip to um, uh, foundation two. There are some uh, nice exercises though in foundation one, which are pretty useful. So that's why I bundle them all together um, so that you save more money that way. Uh, yeah, if you get uh, foundation one, two, three, and four, you know you may not use everything in foundation one, and it might be too easy for you. But there might be some key exercises there that would really benefit you that that you should learn um, like uh, the uh, immortal wrist exercise I really like this uh, this exercise that I show um, how to do uh, down up patterns on parallel strings it's a very nice exercise to, to learn and I use it uh, in my wood playing today um, you also learn a little bit uh, about uh, tremolo in the in foundation one because I go right into it I want people to start learning tremolo from the very beginning um, and trying to do it because it takes time to develop um, yeah so there are some uh, benefits to having uh, all four of the the levels but uh, level two let me show you read to you what's in level two uh, so we start to get into um, the microtones and uh, so you start to learn um, how to play the mi microtones, which is very important. And uh, I show you the, the tricks to finding the microtones, the basic ones that we use in Arabic music. Uh, yeah, so that's... Uh, and from then on, you start to learn uh, songs. Um, let's see what we got here. Uh, we have like Saluni and Nas, um, some Dulab in uh, Maqam Rast and uh, some other Bint al Shalabiya and Nahuand and all that kind of stuff, um, Maqam Kurd. Um, yeah, so uh, you could probably start off from level two. Uh, any more questions? Let's see. Thanks, Carol. It's always good to hear your feedback on the program. All right, that's it for me. Um, I think there was a question. Oh, yeah, is that... Is that Zakaria, there's a song uh, called Hai Shami Shawan. It's a Turkish song. I wonder what Makam it's on. No, it's a Turkish, it's a Kurdish song. 
Um, I don't know that song. I'm not familiar with it. Um, if it's a pop song, if it's a popular song, it's likely either in Makam Bayati, Kurd, or could be Hijaz. Um, who knows? Yeah. I'd have to hear the song. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for joining me today. Hope you enjoyed and uh, have a great uh, week. And let me know if you have any questions. Here's my email address. You can always email me. I'm always available. I do try to email back on time. But uh, these days it might be a bit uh, slower. Support at udforguitarist.com. Okay, thank you. Have a good one. Bye-bye.